Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Chavon. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? I ain't the voice of anybody's damn childhood. I'm just an old fart with a microphone, dude. Well, you're the voice of our Wednesdays every week. Ladies and gentlemen, put them together. Thank you. It's Tony Schiavone. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, started out. Uh, I love I, I, I love doing commentary, but I, I know my role. And it's a good role. I'm not complaining. And I'm really excited about being back on Rampage. I really am. I, I enjoy doing Rampage because I kind of work on the show anyway. So, uh, and, uh, and enjoy just doing the interviews and everything. So I'm having a great life. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, here we are in 2022 and who would have thunk it, uh, when, uh, 2016 started, uh, that I would be sitting here with you and back into the business. And I, I know it's stuff we've hashed over many, many times, but who would have fucking thunk it? Who would have fucking thunk anything that happened this year in wrestling would have happened much less the last several years. And now we're going to talk about something we can't believe happened way back when. Yeah. We're going back to like August of 94 here for clash of the champions. 28. We ran down the card last week and Tony, you were a little taken aback. Like what the fuck? Mm. Uh, because you didn't remember much of this happening and no. I don't remember ever watching it. No, but the lineup. It's like a who's who, man. This is going to yeah. be a fun show. It is going to be a fun show for a number of reasons. Uh, this uh, obviously came after Hogan defeated Flair for the world title in Orlando in that pay per view. Uh, what was it? Bash of the Beach in 94. That's right. Yep. And there were Hogan's title defense against Flair here. But Lord Steven Regal against Antonio Noki? Come on. Wow, man. How about that? We got 4,200 folks here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And mm -hmm. I know when I think about bringing a Noki over and Hogan and flair on top, I think of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, yeah. and there is a great line <laughs> near the start of this program from Bobby, the brain Heenan. I can't wait for us to track. Mm. Uh, and what's interesting about this program is I tried to preview it and somebody somewhere dropped the ball because it starts with a big disclaimer from WWE trying to explain, Hey man, mm -hmm. we're going to play this in the most complete form possible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and fire this up and we almost join a match in progress, if you will, with the nasty boys making their way to the ring. Mm. But Bobby's got such a great line about Cedar Rapids. I just want to play it all the way through. <clears throat> okay. And uh, a couple of times here, uh, in between matches, we'll take a pause every now and again and, and shill some of our fine products brought to you. <laughs> Here on what happened when, of course, we're coming to you live from the blue chew studios and you see biggity bug back there chilling the most. And, uh, I think this is the time where we usually have a, a special countdown, Tony. Yeah. It's a special countdown from Steph Chesney. And here it is our countdown on what happened when you know, it's all about you. Presented in the most complete form possible due to original WCW production, technical difficulties. As we know, they sucked. We won. Sincerely, WWE. Well, the Sharks did not make their way to the ring. Our thanks to Liberty recording artist Ricky Lynn Gregg with the rendition of the National Anthem as the punch of the champions is off and running and the nasty boys are making their way to the ring brain. And they are as nasty as ever. They were in the back area. They were kicking over cans, shoving people around. They spray painted half the building back there. They're as nasty as they come. Well, the nasty boys, certainly, as you can see, the fans here at Cedar Rapids, the five season center. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I stopped today to buy a pack of gum. I gave the woman a dollar. She gave me back 11 pieces of corn. What does that tell you where we're at? Yeah. It got all over me, Tony. 11 pieces of corn. 
I had to play it. I was like, dude, we're not missing that. We're playing that. <laughs> I guess now that I listened back through, it makes sense. What they cut out here is someone mm-hmm. singing the star spangled banner or whatever. Maybe they didn't yeah. have permission or what have you, but yeah, I know. I, the nasty boys are always a favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> And here comes pretty wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I like both of these guys individually, but collectively with these sunglasses, they look like a couple of fucking goofs. <laughs> oh, what a time to be in WCW 1994 on the cusp of something going very, very well. This also was just about the time there. You see the, the, uh, the, uh, the blacktop bully, right? Yeah. Uh, it's also a, a time that we were in tr- transition between using Jesse Ventura and Bobby Heenan with me because Ventura kind of fell out of favor with Eric Bischoff sleeping on the job. Yeah. Also making a lot of money that yep. Eric thought he was overpaid. Yep. And you know, in the scheme of things, he, he probably was, but I didn't mind it. Well, let's also just not bury the lead Hogan yeah. was coming in. Yeah. Right. And there had been heat there for a long, long time. And I actually like the look of this. I like the way it's lit. I like the color scheme. Uh, the yeah. fans seem to be, uh, it seems to be a full house. Even if it's not, it looks pretty full and I love the nasty boys, man. I know it's silly. I know it doesn't make any sense, but in this era, I just felt like they were the epitome of, of wrestling the eighties and nineties. Like I know by the late nineties, it was maybe a passe act, but in the early to mid nineties, it fucking hit for me. Yeah. A story about Brian Nobbs as it relates to our recent Starcast Five. Mm. When when I it's it's just a s- small story, but it's kind of funny. I I uh, sat down at my table, set, saw my name on it, sat on the table, and uh, and Megan was helping me. Uh, Megan Nelson was helping me unload all the stuff, and I noticed on the table as I'm looking at the table and look to my left, I notice it says Nasty Boys, and I don't know who who was who was there working for you at that time, I turned to him and I said, <clears throat> can we move the nasty boy somewhere else? Because I don't need to sit here all day listening to Brian Knobs. Right. Okay. And so we kind of looked around. I was walking the tables and he came to me and said, the nasty boy start at four when you're done. I went, thank God. So <laughs> it's not that I don't like Brian, but he can be a little much, right? A lot much. Yeah. And then they came in while I, we were packing up and, I got to see both of them and they were very, very, you know, very nice. And obviously knobs has lost a lot of weight and he's had yeah. a lot of health problems. Sags look pretty good. Uh, but I mean, they were the fucking nasty boys, buddy. They were, uh, Brian knobs was something else, man. By the way, we also had uh Mr. Wonderful son there who brought a lot of his old fantastic robes and memorabilia, just keeping hmm. that, that legend of Mr. Wonderful going. Oh, okay. one of the real forgotten greats, you know, I feel like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. If he would have been, you know, in his prime a few more years before the injury and all that stuff, I think people would talk about him in a ravishing Rick rude, Mr. Perfect way. Yeah. It feels like he just didn't get enough camera time during the quote unquote boom. If that yeah. makes sense, because when you think about that, that outdoor stadium show, he ran with Hogan. Man, that was unbelievable. And of course, you know, injuries are real and a part of the business and it happened for him, but just a, a really criminally underrated talent. He had a big, big run with Hogan. Yeah, he really did. And he had one of what I think one of the most memorable finishes ever Yes, was that, that cage where they both dropped about the same time. And the replay showed that Hogan's foot hit just a few minutes earlier or seconds earlier, I should say. And I thought it was a good run and Paul Orndorff was a part of my childhood because he and Jimmy Snuka were NWA world tag team champions back in the mid Atlantic territory. And they had a run with Baron Von Raschke and Greg Valentine. And I remember I was there when at the Richmond Coliseum, Orndorff and Snuka won the world tag team belts sold out Richmond Coliseum. I was there. I remember where I was sitting. Uh, so it was, a. Uh, I always like, and I got to work with Paul, you know, he was in the, uh, Wow, look at him run. Holy shit. <laughs> look at the fans going crazy. Uh, I got to work with Paul. He worked at the uh, the power plant, and uh, I, I liked Paul a lot. And I ever tell you the, I ever tell you the story about shitting in, in a tree? Oh, yes. Yeah. A very early what happened when story. But you know what? Some of our listeners are just 
you know, they fell in love with Tony Schiavone on Wednesday. So maybe they missed some of that pre AEW mm -hmm. stuff. Let's hear about shitting in a tree. All right. We were eating in Orlando. This is back when we were doing WCW in, uh, in Disney. And we all had dinner. It was a bunch of us. No, he was there. Janie Engel was there. Oh, it had to be a couple more people. And we were talking about crazy things we did when we were younger. And he looked at me and he was serious. He said, yeah. He said, I bet you, you did this, didn't you? I said, what? He said, did you ever climb up a tree and take a shit just to see what it looked like falling out of a tree? And I went, no, no. Did you do that? You stupid son of a bitch. He went, yeah. <laughs> crazy things you do when you're a kid uh, climbing a tree to shit and we'll see it fall no what was that thing when we were kids uh k-i-s-s-i-n-g <laughs> you and so and so shitting in a tree s-h-i-t-t-i-n-g <laughs> yeah there you go yeah, we're right. gonna remix that one day um, <laughs> all orndorff oh my god but unfortunately you know he he really went downhill and uh and we got a glimpse of his final days, which was just terrible. And, but anyway, uh, he's, was a great performer. Yeah. I liked him. Good guy. And, um, I kind of think if he was born five years later, yeah, man, what could have been possible? And I believe, uh, because oddly enough, Nick Jackson uh, came up to me uh, the other day backstage, probably a couple of weeks ago, he did this and asked me about Orndorff's injury that apparently happened during fall brawl. And he said, do you remember the injury? And I said, yes, I do. And, uh, I tried to go back and look, look for it. And then we got busy on my phone. We were backstage. Uh, but, uh, you know, he heard he, he, we had to kind of stop the match or something or cart him off or something. It was in 2000. I think he had a right, stink. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. I think it was fall brawl 2000, which have been the, you know, the end of his career. Well, hell he, Less than a year later is the end of all of our careers. So we freaking knew. They're giving them some time in this, this early match. Yeah. I, and, yeah. and by the way, um, Meltzer had, well, as he always did and does, I guess, a lot to say uh, mm -hmm. about this one. Let me see if I can uh, find our write up about the clash. It's interesting to see, you know, where the business was, by the way, because in July of 93, pre Hogan. Right. So a year before Hogan's there, your average attendance at a WCW show, this is real y'all 655 fans. Mm. And a year later, it's 1,740 fans. Okay. Now, that's still not huge, but no. Lord have mercy, 655. That's, that's a like, freaking indie show. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. That's like going to, uh, some sort of bingo hall and wrestling. Oh, they, I, they had more there. Yeah. I'm not talking about ECW. I'm just talking about like, a. I don't know, like a barn. Sure. Like, like, uh, like rocket city wrestling. That's kind of like what that's it. What that is. Well, there you go. Yeah. Or Southern honor. One of those indie shows. Look at or, you knowing some indies. Yeah. Warriors of wrestling, Staten Island. I kind of don't even know what's going on right now. You're just rattling off indies. Shit, man. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in with the business now. You know, I'm in with the business. Do you ever, uh, how, how many times do you look yourself in the, in the, in the, in the face in the mirror and just go, why did I do this? Why, why do I do wrestling? Well, like I'm sure the, it, <laughs> there, that has, there have to be a few Godfather <laughs> moments. Yeah. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled yeah. Cause like for a while it felt yeah. like, oh, fuck wrestling. And then you got back into it a little bit and it was kind of fun. And now yeah. you're just, you're too far in You're knee deep, baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm knee deep and I'm treading water. My God, <laughs> just keep paddling, baby. You'll be fine. <laughs> keep paddling. <laughs> uh, this match, um, did get a write up in the observer. They're going to go okay. nine minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, Meltzer gave it a star and a half. Mm, okay. All right. Star and a half, you know, good crowd though. You, you meant you mentioned how it was lit and everything. A great, a great, uh, this is probably. This is probably around the time, isn't uh, isn't it around the time where the blacktop bully and uh, uh, and Mike Graham and all of them got uh, fired? I think or... that was the following March. Okay, it was an uncensored, if you remember. Yeah. Uh, let me mention with regards to uh, Meltzer, uh, he shows or he says that they had the building cut down to six thousand seats, mm -hmm. 
There were 3,400 paid with comps. There's 4,200 fans in the building. Looks good. $40,000 house. Meltzer says, well, it's hard to sell a clash since it's live on television for free. And Cedar Rapids isn't exactly a prime location to draw a monster house. That's still a weak turnout. Yeah. Especially for such a well-hyped match between two dominant names in the modern era. Right. Those who were there were rabid. So it came off as a good crowd for TV, but the days of the live gate for these big shows is secondary to how it looks at home for the viewer. And just to recap, we got Hogan and flair in the main event here in 94, one right. month after they set all kinds of records. But at this point, I guess it's like, Hey, we've seen it. Yeah. So what else is there? Or maybe it's not, but mm -hmm. I know that it was the seventh highest rated cable television main event in modern pro wrestling. You had 4,126,000 households. Mm -hmm. It's the largest viewing audience for any WCW or NWA modern television program. So there you, there go. you go. Right. There you go. Is right. And I didn't realize it. And I guess I should have realized it big pop for the nasty boys in the wind. And well, the nasty boys are baby faces. Believe that or not. Paul Orndorff could never be a baby face. No, no. <laughs> I wish they'd won those tag titles. I absolutely love those tag titles. Wish I could get my hands on one, but your buddy, Dan Lambert has it and won't let go. My buddy. Okay. I thought y'all were tight. I like Dan a lot. I like Dan a lot. I do nice. One of the nicest guys I've met. Straightforward, no bullshit. Yep. Good dude. A lot of nice guys in wrestling. Couple assholes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Well, you know what? Uh, I was talking to Lois about that and I was thinking because of my new job and everything, I said, you just got to deal with such at times you got to deal with such some, a, a lot of bullshit and a lot of shitheads. And she said, you know what? It's that in every business. Yeah. And I thought it was pretty profound coming from a woman who hasn't worked in 40 years. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. To this too. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about it right now. Call the Hulk Hogan hotline. 1-900-737-HULK. It's got eight incredible options like beat the Hulk, Hulk trivia, and one of my great Hulk messages. There's always something new on the Hulk Hogan hotline. Call now. 1-900-737-HULK. Call costs a dollar forty nine per minute. Kids get parents' permission. Charges will appear on a parent's phone bill. I wonder how that did. It did fucking terrible. I, I'm sure it did. It was around for a, a hiccup. Yeah. You're not selling rumor and innuendo. You're not catering to the smart fans. Yeah. And even the sell or one of my incredible Hulk messages. What the fuck is an incredible Hulk <laughs> message? <laughs> What do, you, what do you think mean Gene Schillen here? In uh, World Championship Wrestling history. Hey, ah, uh, history. CW He's brand new too. Wave champion of the world, Hulk Hogan. God, he's the best, man. Greatest voice. Bring Q Hulk. Hey, Q Hulk. Come on, bring him out. That's what kind of would have been said backstage by that time. Give me a reaction shot. Boom. Oh my God. Arn Anderson under uh, a play. Yeah. Just nailed Hogan with a crowbar in the knee. Uh -huh. Nancy Kerrigan style by God. That's right. That's 1994. Come on. Sure is. That, it sure is. Old Jeff Giuliani's around here somewhere. <laughs> this derby out looking for a zero bar. Eric Bischoff's out. It looks like Missy High was out. Who else is coming out here in the suit? Uh, let's see. Trying to figure out who's around, but this was, remember, this was revealed as brother Brudai, right? Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's Bach. That's what I thought it was. Nick Bockwinkle is that Gary Juster, Jim Barnett. I wish they had taken that uh, lead pipe and hit him in the head with it right there. I don't Not remember doing this at all. Let's track it. Here. Someone came out from behind Hulk Hogan during the entrance, and my God, he got some help for him. Did you see how hard he got hit in the knee? Greg Gagne is out on the right. Somebody give me a break. Greg Gagne is out there claiming credit for something. 
<laughs> Martin, you saw that. Chester, you saw it. Come on, get him out of here. Look at Barnett. Somebody. Apps, there's Nick Bockwinkle. Fans, I apologize for this great guy. This is absolutely horrible. Now, this was supposed to be an interview with Hogan, an right? An interview with Hulk Hogan, like we said, scheduled. And as he walks towards the interview set, out of nowhere, someone, it looked like he had some sort of pipe or bar in his hand, hit him right on the knee with it. Boy, he got him good. Boy, you're not kidding. They're, they're putting on a brace right now. All right. Mean Gene is right there. Gene, can you on a brace. Can you really? Yeah, Tony, Bobby, I don't know if you can. See what's going on back here. This is the most horrific thing I have ever seen. From out of nowhere, somebody came with a, an apparently a steel pipe and absolutely blasted that left knee. of. Maybe it was Colonel Muster. Are we playing Clue? <laughs> it always tickles me when there's these steel pipes. It just tickled me when he said that. When Gene said that, I remember, I actually remember when Gene said, I don't know if you can see that. And I all remember him saying that. I'm really thinking, yeah, Gene, that camera to your right means we can see that <laughs> <laughs> you know he's doing his best to make some chicken salad oh of course he is of course he was the best man but i just hit me as funny that when he's i don't i don't know if you can see it joe sparacino in the headphones right there with the headset on he's one of our audio guys been around for a long time i think joe may do some work with the nfl right now Wow. And they will be loading him up there. You see Chuck Tashe, who is the trainer that is with all of our wrestlers wherever they go. Eric Bischoff, who, of course, not only is one of our announcers, is senior vice president and executive producer of World Championship Wrestling, is there. And so, wait a minute. What? Okay. I just got word from one of the uh, production assistants here. They've sent word back to lock the doors to the building. No one is going to leave the building. They're searching for whoever did that to Hogan. They're back in the dress room area right now. They're going through all the dress room, all the offices back there. And I guess they're going to be going through the crowd here to find out exactly what happened and who that was. Well, they should. Well, it's Arn Anderson with a cold boy in the backstage area chilling. <laughs> Asking what the score of the Braves game is. <laughs> Elser would say Hogan came out for an interview and they shot the Nancy Kerrigan angle as a masked man with a club, hit him in the back of the knee. As all the company officials gathered around the masked man was actually Arn Anderson. Although when it gets revealed in storyline, they claim it'll be Kurt Hennig. Hennig's under contract to the WWF. So he can't appear on WCW TV until October or November. So for future trivia, he'll be the character who was introduced as the perpetrator of a major angle on a show that he didn't even attend <laughs> clash to the champions event on November 16th. In Jacksonville, looks like it'll be Flair and Kurt versus Hogan and Sting. And of course, we know none of that shit actually happened. Mm. Wound up being Brother Bruda. Wow. Which and is probably course, what they, they paid it off at Clash of the Champions in Municipal Auditorium in Nashville. So, yeah. yeah. I thought it was funny as we're talking. David Crockett walked out. I don't know if you noticed that. And you see David in the background with a black yeah. jacket. David Crockett walked out, and I could see, I could, I could see what he was saying. He was saying, Let's get him off. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We got a TV show to do. This is gone long enough. Yeah, it had. It, that thing went a long, long time. Basically, the first segment is like 19 minutes, 20 minutes, and 11 of it is the Hogan thing. And coming up next, you want to talk about a special match. This is mm -hmm. it. Ricky yeah. Steamboat and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Before he was Stone Cold, they get plenty of time, 16 minutes and five seconds. Uh, Meltzer would say the finish with all the moves back and forth so quickly at the end was similar with outside interference to the savage steamboat WrestleMania three match. The only negative of this was so much emphasis was being put on the Hogan angle, right? The changing of the U S title came off as an excellent match that really had no impact. And in fact, was never brought up again. The rest of the show. Yeah. The best they would have done was to treat the title as more than time filler. This was the best job WCW has ever done at making an angle seem important by constantly referring to it. Yeah. The only problem was by the end of the show, the angle being played paid up. So played up. So huge had such little payoff three and three quarter stars. Of course, they're referencing the fact that despite all of this, that we just saw with Hogan, he's still wrestling, not mm -hmm. next week, not next month tonight in the main yeah. event. Yeah. And that was important. Wasn't it for us to sell that because we wanted didn't want fans say, oh, he got hurt. He's not going to wrestle. So we had to play it up that he was. 
Uh, are we looking at uh, one of the greatest baby faces ever? Uh, an absolute phenomenal wrestler. And it was yeah. a little weird to me as we see Stone Cold coming out here, rocking that U.S. title belt. And look at this look, man, with the hair and the goatee. Yeah. He looked like a star even then. Yeah, man. But it was a little weird to me that we show Ricky, the dragon steamboat in his full dragon guard, which was a little silly and his flaming torch and all that. But then we, we show him wiping his mouth with a paper towel. Uh huh. Like, it's like guys shoot something else. No, we're WCW. We're too fucking stupid to shoot anything else. I mean, I understand that he's going to wipe his mouth with the paper towel and everybody at home does too. But like, can we just pretend? Yeah. Why don't you just show him putting that silly shit on in the backstage area too? I mean, damn. You know, one of the shows that, that I, I always watch a screener of rampage on Thursday before yeah. it airs. And, uh, it's happened a couple of times where somebody is going to talk, right? Somebody's going to walk out with a microphone and you can hear him walk out going, is this thing on? Is this thing on? Hello? Is this thing on? And w- it'll be on the screener. And I'll tell the guys, I said, that makes it sound so fucking stupid. Yeah. Is this thing on? I say, would you? Would you cut that? Okay. And we get, we, we cut it because you know, it's not, it's not a live show, but yeah, some of those shots like that, like, is this thing on make it sound so freaking dumb? Oh Lord. I like that. You get fired up and passionate about wrestling. I get fired up and passionate about a show looking good. I tell you that. No, I appreciate that. I like it. Yeah. Cause you're the guy who created Shivani. (laughs) <laughs> and so now when you don't Shivani, it's like, look at this guy, Aaron and shit. Yeah. Coming up next boys and girls. And so don't you dare mm. change that, touch that dial. We got a honky tonk man music video. Oh my God. Do we really? Yes, we do. This is before he fell out of favor with Eric Bischoff. I take it. This is before he got fired. Yes. <laughs> Bouncer would say real creative song. It was almost the same tune with just a few words changed from his entrance music with the WWF. Mm-hmm. Can you get into trouble for plagiarizing yourself? <laughs> I continue to play the Hogan angle up with Dick Bockwinkle, whose name was misspelled on the graphic. No, yeah, of course. Saying that if Hogan can't defend the title, they'll just give the title to Flair. So lots of, uh, lots of stuff happening here. And I got to tell you, man, so far, I know it's easy to poke fun. This is a pretty good show, dude. Of course it is. Yeah. Well, we had some good things back there, you know. Tony Khan claims that his favorite era of, of WCW was pre Hogan. Yeah, this one. Yeah. 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 From, from like 92, three and four, those years. He talks about that with me a lot. Those are his favorite years. Of course, you know, whatever you're growing up and whatever, you know, you remember as a child, you know, that's, that's it. Obviously, because I go back to, you know, my years were growing up in the Crockett era. So that's what you remember. That's what brings you back. Somebody feel them seats there, please. Somebody feel them goddamn yeller seats. Hey, Ron Kirk, Ron Kirk, who became an Uber driver in Atlanta, smart guy talking to Bobby Heenan. Somebody feel them orange yeller seats right there. Uh, uh, how do you know hey. Ron Kirk became an Uber driver? Did you run into him? Yes, at a, at a quick trip. Wow. I said, Ron, what the fuck are you doing? He said, well, I'm just making a little extra money. And this was like, Gosh, this was like maybe about five years ago, six years ago. When Uber was first popping off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't it crazy to think how quickly our world has changed, really? I mean, yeah. 10 years ago, people took taxis. Mm-hmm. And now everybody just gets in a stranger's car and we're cool with it. Yeah, I know. I know. You got to tell them your name before you get in. Tony. Tony. Well, here's the thing. If they say your name, it's just easy to say yes. Yeah, no, I should. You know what I, mean? I, should like, I should hop in one day and go, Tony. And then about halfway go, I said, I fucking lied. Where are we going? Uh, this, this show, I love you for that. This show <laughs> and the observer, you know, they always do thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the yep. middle, mm-hmm. 30.6% thumbs up, mm. 46.9% thumbs down. As we see a picture in picture here of the mm-hmm. ambulance, like they're following the ambulance with a camera. So yeah, there you go. This is why I got a thumbs of uh, mostly thumbs down. Thumbs are real 22 and a half, but this is the blow away best match on the show. It got 196 votes mm-hmm. steamboat and Austin, which I guess makes sense. But here's, what's fascinating about this to me. The readers of the wrestling observer thought the second best match 
was Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. Hmm. They thought the third best match was Anoki and Regal. Okay. And they thought the worst match was Anoki and Regal. And they thought the second worst match was Flair and Hogan, which means boys and girls can't fucking please all the people all the time. No. So as Tony Schiavone would say, fuck them. <laughs> say it more than once. How about the, uh, uh, the words on the back of Austin's tights there? Dragon Slayer. Whoa. I wonder if he kept those. Yeah. I don't know. We, uh, we kind of discussed that backstage recently. At AEW. What discuss what Austin's tights? Uh the use of Dragon Slayer. Because uh Daniel Garcia said in one of his interviews. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. About Brian. Got it. Yeah. Which by, by the way, uh I think we got something special with Daniel Garcia. Hundred um, percent in yeah. ten years he'll be yeah, the talk of the best. He's great right now. I'm right. just saying he's so young. Yeah. It's like, you know. I've had this conversation with some other guys. I think wrestler prime, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I think wrestler prime is like 37 to early forties. Sure. Like that's your, that's when guys usually main event WrestleMania is and they're on top and they're making the most money and their highest. And by the way, that works out in business too. Like most people who start a career in their twenties, you know, they're cutting their teeth and paying their dues. And then in their thirties, they're making a little more money, but mm -hmm. it's their they're late forties. Usually when they get into their peak earning, maybe even their early fifties. And that's when they, they sort of max out. Now, if you're Shivani, you have a <laughs> resurgence and you make your best money in your sixties. Yeah. It, isn't that unbelievable? It is, but yeah. I mean, Hey, good for you. It's working yeah. for Bruce too. I mean, Bruce is doing better than ever in his late fifties. So yeah. Yeah. I just like, wow. Well. uh, but yeah, I, I, I think Garcia with a little more seasoning, a little more familiarity with the crowd and the audience, like. Once he becomes an institution in wrestling, he's going to be yeah. a big, big, big deal. He's also so willing backstage to, to learn and work. I, I I've got a lot of time for him. I do. Who don't you have a lot of time for? Let's shit on some folks, Tony. Uh, honky tonk man, MJF, MJF, terrible person. We all know that. Yeah. Thank, thank God. Just I don't have to see him anymore. And I shouldn't even say this. <laughs> but thank God. we know he's a heel it's fine yeah oh uh, uh, what about nick patrick with a buzz cut here i just yeah how about that I had, I, had to, I had to do a double take i mean i i kind of preferred the kenny powers look because it's just fun because i love kenny powers but he kind of looks cool with a buzz cut hmm. like he looks like the type of guy you'd want to see his hog or something you know mm. doubt it well hey, oh, I, tell, now. I, I tell you who i don't like Oh yeah. This is what I need. Disco fucking Inferno. Oh God. Glenn fucking Gilberti. Why now? He's worthless. When's the last time you saw him or talked to him? Uh, I saw him in the Atlanta airport about a month ago. And did you speak to him? Yeah. I was on an escalator and somebody behind me said, what are the chances? What are the chances? I'm thinking, I don't want to turn around. You, you recognized his voice. Yes. And I went, Glenn, what are you fucking doing? He said, I'm going, going to see my, my mom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to visit my mom. He said, yeah. I come in and visit my mom. Braves are in town. I go to go see the Braves play. I said, I, I could probably get you free tickets, but fuck you. And he laughed. He said, you really give me shit. Don't you? I said, sure do. I said, I got to go park my car. I got to go get my parked car. Glenn, talk to you soon. He said, okay. And we smiled and that was it. But you really don't like that motherfucker. He's a, he's look, he's a, what <laughs> I almost said, who did he ever beat? <laughs> I love you. You became an old fucking grizzled vet. Look at you. <laughs> who did he ever beat? <laughs> I almost said that. Not miss Jackie. That's who he beat. It, yeah. So I just, uh, uh, I just, uh, you know, I just hear the things that he says. And of course. He brings on Adam DeMoy on his broadcast, Adam DeMoy. And listen, I've, I've met a lot of people through the years. All right. A lot of people, a lot of people, Adam DeMoy is like on top of the, he is on the Mount Rushmore of miserable pieces of shit. He's miserable. And they bring him on as a guest all the time. Why? Because I don't know. Are they out of Conan, content? Conan knows better. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't know. 
Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I does, know this annoying. Wait, wait. Yeah. Does, wait, does Joe Feeney work on that broadcast? On that podcast? Yeah, he's like their producer editor. Well, th there it is. Joe Feeney don't. Joe Feeney is a knucklehead for bringing him on. Joe Feeney don't control none of that. Well, if Joe. he's the if he, if I'm the producer of no, a I'm podcast, not. all right, and Disco and for our uh, Adam Demoy's voice is on there, I edit the sucker out. Okay, you can you can edit it. And Feeney probably uses like Adobe Audition or yes, yes. or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the deal on that. Okay. Jojo has to do what Conan says. Uh, well, I get that. Conan captains the ship. All right. And by the way, I know you're going to hate this because uh -huh. everybody thinks it's a cop out when I say it about anybody, but fuck you guys. I'm from the South and this is how I roll. Uh -huh. I treat people how they treat me. And yeah. if I see you being shitty or you are shitty to me or people around me, or I see it or hear it or understand it or whatever, then okay. I can uh -huh. form a shitty opinion of you, uh -huh. but try as I might, this goes always been kind of cool to me. Yeah. Like, so I haven't had a bad experience with him and I didn't think you had, I think you might just not like that. He says critical things about AEW, but who gives a shit, dude? Yeah. Like sincerely, like what happens in AEW ain't yeah. your fault one oh, way or, or the other. You're out there doing your job just like always. And but people used to shit on WCW. You didn't take it super personally. No, Who cares? no. I, I listen, I'm, I'm working you here. I, I get along with Glenn. I, you know, uh, Oh good. Well, no, well, fuck him then <laughs> double fuck him. Glenn. I, I'm back with you now. I was thinking, <laughs> damn, I, cause you know, there's a lot of people online, dude. They, they, this tribalism thing is real. And it's like, either oh, I, oh, you I know AEW or you hate it. There's no yeah. in between. And if, yeah. Like I said, something complimentary of raw last week, because they, they had a little segment about the U S title and they showed the history of the U S title and all the guys who held it. And they had Tommaso Ciampa come out and Harley races Starcade 83 row. Oh, awesome. I was like, dude, this feels like old school wrestling. I love this. This is awesome. And I tweeted, this is awesome. Hashtag WWE raw. And then I got eight alive in the comments. Uh huh. How dare you? Everything WWE sucks. And I'm like, guys, I just saw a segment randomly at the boot and thought it was fucking cool. Cause I didn't think they were showing old school history yeah. stuff, you know? And I was like, Hey, the nostalgia fan in me thinks that's awesome. But just giving anyone a compliment is somehow sliding everyone else. It's weird. Well, let, let, let me, let me give you a, let me give you a comment from someone who works for AEW and works in the front office for AEW, as most of you know, by now. Okay. Okay. WWE does not suck. Right. It doesn't. Right. It's one of the top entertainment entities in the world. Yes. It doesn't suck. Sometimes you don't like some of their matches. Sometimes you don't like some of our matches. I get it. You can, yeah. but they don't suck. Right. Pro wrestling does not suck. If you like pro wrestling, you like us, you like them, you like independent, you like new Japan, you like, uh, all that shit. Yeah. You like the, Impact, uh, the MLW, Josie, blah, blah, blah. MLW, Josie pro. Yeah. Uh, all the women's wrestling, uh, New Japan, yada, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah. You like it all. So it doesn't suck. Right. Okay. And, and you know what? I, 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 I know Tony came out with this and sometimes I, I, I think sometimes it, it, it may be, it may be bots. I really think it that oh. sometimes it may be. How about this? Mute those motherfuckers and move on with your life. Yeah, I know. I, it, I love, you know, William Ringle has a great new podcast called gentleman villain, and uh -huh. it's really great. It's if you're trying to be in the business, uh -huh. it just drops some knowledge on you. That's just He's something old, else. Grizzled yeah. veteran, successful person in the wrestling, but like, let's not forget this guy's more than just a quote unquote TV character for AW. Uh -huh. He was, you know, the most prolific WWE scout of the last two decades. Uh -huh. And he says, Twitter ain't real. Uh huh. Like realistically, how many people watch the show? A million. Right. How right. many negative tweets did you see? Seven. Mm. Right. Who gives a shit? Right. Was your boss happy with your performance? Were, yes. the, were the people who were paying you happy with your performance? That's what you should be paying attention to. That's what matters. None of the other bullshit. I know social media has, has been a detriment to the business. Well, it's just, just a society. I it's mean, a society. Yes, of course it has because they take on the, so if you can take a, you can take a, a positive tweet as confirmation of what you're doing is right. And maybe it's not, 
Right. Where you take a negative tweet that says you're doing shitty and maybe you're not. Just move on from it. Move on from it. Because like I said, the worst people in the world are on Twitter. It's a promotional vehicle, really. Yeah, that's all it is. By the way, I, this era of of Austin is really, really great, man. And I know sometimes people get critical of Stone Cold's in ring stuff, and they say, "Well, he was just a brawler. He was just a character. He was just a promo." And mm -hmm. look at him here, yeah. pre knee brace, pre middle finger, mm -hmm. pre beer, and a little bit thinner, here. a little thinner here too, right? Great shape. Yep. And he's got his working boots on. I mean, this, this is a good match, man. This is a great match. Yeah, man. And he's sailing like hell for steamboat too. Yeah. Look at the fans with him. It's so good to see steamboat do his thing. Mm -hmm. I wonder what he's up to these days. Uh, I don't know. Oh, wow. Look at that. Nice little spine buster. I did that move to Megan right there the other day. <laughs> Got it on tape. No, is it, is, is it on your demo tape? No, I, I didn't do it above a love sponge's house. Okay. okay. So we were good. If you send you, I got a plate, send you demo tape. If you want for a W hypothetically, mm -hmm. um, no. Okay. I was gonna say that that didn't happen. I mean, I know you used to have a lot of Shivani home movies, but you didn't. Well, shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> your your response, well, shit, no. <laughs> I will never forget. I wish it was my text message ringtone for you. Well, okay. shit, no. I got to tell a true story. All right, okay. you're gonna you're gonna dig this, and I've told it many times. <laughs> Okay. I've told her many times since last Tuesday when Lois had her surgery. All right. And she, she kind of gets pissed off at me for saying this. She All don't right. listen. We're fine. Okay. Yeah. It'll get back to her. Uh, by the way, I had a Lois rule sign the other night in Minneapolis. Roll title on that. Yeah. I put it, I put it on Twitter. Those guys were had it and they ran down. And then another guy said, I came here to meet Tony Schiavone. I went over, took a picture with him. He had a sign that said that. And underneath of it, he said, Lois rules. There's the one, one, two, three count. Great freaking match. Really nice. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the winner and new United States heavyweight champion, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat. Wow. We have to take a break. Is the U.S. champion. We will try to get contact with Eric Bischoff. When we come back, I'm back. Feeling it hard. <laughs> anyway, you you had this great story about Lois. You yeah, talked, uh, you are we gonna do the, Wait, 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 wait. Is this gonna be the honky tonk? Let's just track it. Being Gene Oakland, and you were right there when that all took place to Hulk Hogan. I'll tell you what is just uh what what has become a nightmare for me. I couldn't believe it. It was supposed to be one of the biggest nights ever in World Championship Wrestling history. And then from out of the shadows, back to the entrance, uh, somebody came up and absolutely blew away that knee on Hulk Hogan. I mean, I still cannot comprehend how it all happened. All right, I believe we have a report from the hospital from Eric Bischoff, and let's go to that at this time. Uh, drama. So just for context, so everybody knows, Brother Bruda is with Jimmy Hart in the back of the ambulance. Mm-hmm. Just so for continuity's sake, he was there, and now here's Bischoff. Look, I don't know a lot. Ambulance right over here. The only thing I do know, they're going in to check him. We won't know anything specifically till we hear from a spokesman from the hospital. As you can see, he's on his way to the emergency room. The only thing I know from talking to Hulk Hogan inside of the ambulance, he didn't see anything. All he felt was something snap inside of his knee. He didn't see he, he didn't see anything else. He said it felt like someone fell out of the rafters on his knee. Again, we don't know anything now. I'm going to take this. I'm going to try to get some information. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Eric now going into the emergency room here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The question is about the match that he has a title defense against Rick Flair coming up alive here tonight. Okay, here's what I'm going to do, Tony. I have uh, cornered Commissioner Nick Bockwinkel in the back. Oh, we come God. Back. 
PBS. I'm going to be talking to Commissioner of World Championship Wrestling, and we'll try get the facts. Like, get that smile off your face. You got it. I can smile whenever I want. Hey Hogan, I hope the bedpan's not cold. <laughs> Fans, not only will we come back with Mean Gene talk to Commissioner Nick Bockwinkel, but the Honky Talk Man, a man arriving very soon to WCW, me, will right? debut his brand new video all live on the Clash of the Champions. Stay with us, Tony at forty-one twenty. Five, let's press pause. And of course, we're going to take a time out right now because we know that the haze in the barn, the honky talk man is going to entertain us. We've got a great Lois rules story coming up on the other side, but these days Lois is sleeping good. That's right. Lois is sleeping good. Even post-surgery. And you know why she's got a chilly sleep. Uh -huh. Science tells us the best way to achieve and maintain that consistent deep sleep is by lowering that core body temperature. And guys, I knew that. I knew I slept better when I was cold. I had a ceiling fan in my bedroom my entire life because I've lived in Alabama my entire life. Temperature controlled sleep repairs your muscles after a hard day's work. It improves your cognitive functions. So you always start your day feeling sharp and alert. Chili Sleep makes customizable climate controlled sleep solutions that help you improve your entire well being. I've got the Uller. They also make a cube sleep system. Either way, we're talking hydro power, temperature controlled mattress toppers that fit over your existing mattress to provide you your ideal sleep temperature. These luxury mattress pads keep your bed with the perfect temperature for deep sleep, whether you sleep hot or cold. These sleep systems are designed to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and give you the confidence and energy to power through your day. Imagine waking up and not feeling tired. That has been my existence. Chilly sleep can make it happen for you. I can tell you without question, I sleep better with chilly sleep. I'm more productive with chilly sleep. I'm more well rested with chilly sleep. I feel better with chilly sleep. And Tony, we've got a special offer right now, right? That's right. Head over to chillysleep.com slash WHW to learn more and save 30% off the purchase price of any new cube or Uller sleep system. Now this offer is available exclusively for what happened when listeners and only for a limited time. That's chilly, C-H-I-L-I sleep.com slash WHW. Take advantage of our exclusive discount and wake up refreshed every day. Come on now. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. I'm so fired up about this. It's 4125. Tony, I'm going to count us in here in three, two, one, play. Look at that. So they're going to break now with a little yeah. teeth from the honky talk man. Back with you live at the Clash of the Champions from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. In just a few moments, me and Gene will be talking to Commissioner Nick Bockwinkle. But before we go there, let's debut the newest video from the Honky Tonk Man, a man coming very soon to World Championship Wrestling. Who the hell's this? Hey, buddy, which way the WCW wrestling match? Well, you go down here and you turn left, and you go to fourth and turn right. I'm going down there tonight. Thank you very much. Is that who I thought it was?
Mm. So, Jimmy Hart special right there. That happened. <laughs> yeah, buddy, and this is going to happen too. There's Nick Bockwinkle. Let's see if uh, they can spell his name and let's okay. see what he's got to say here to me, Gene. We have a new U.S. champ. He's Ricky Steamboat, but also earlier on tonight, one of the most appalling things I have ever seen, Commissioner Nick Bockwinkle joining me at this time. First of all, have you heard anything definitive from the hospital regarding the condition of Hulk Hogan? At this point, we still don't know enough to make a statement. All right. That, uh, I guess, poses a certain uh, set of conditions here tonight. As you know, Hulk Hogan was to defend the WCW heavyweight title against the nature boy, Ric Flair. If he is unable to defend, what will the status of that title be? Under the circumstances, under the contract, under the agreement, what it comes down to is simply this. This is live. This is right now. This man was supposed to step into the ring within an hour, hour and 15 minutes from now, whatever the time would be. If the champion Hulk Hogan cannot step into the ring, as sad as I must say it is, he would have to relinquish and forfeit the title to the challenger. And it would be that, that, as you can tell by the reaction of this crowd, <clears throat> would be a very unpopular decision, Mr. Bockwinkle. It would be an extremely unpopular decision. But right now we're trying to reach all of the board members of the WCW. We are desperately trying to, to see if we can come up with anything better than that. You know, Bockwinkle... I'm not so certain that Flair probably didn't order this hit on Hogan himself. We have no proof of any kind, of any circumstances, so we can only run with the rules that we've got staring right in front of us. All right, there you have it. Commissioner of World Championship Wrestling, Nick Bockwinkle, you heard what he had to say. Stay tuned. We're going to be back with more of the Clash of the Champions live here on TBS. Bockwinkle looked like he could teach you a little bit about reverse mortgages <laughs> or term life insurance. Did he not? Yes. Yes. He had that very businessman slash carny look about him. There's no way that we're getting out of this segment without talking about your opinion. Now mm -hmm. of what we saw with that, uh, honky tonk man music video, uh, for 1994, it wasn't bad. Agree. We obviously couldn't center him up on a green screen to save our fucking ass. Uh, but, uh, it was, uh, Oh, oh this, this is such a good promo. It's the view never changes in front of the whole world. When you were born, when you were a baby, when you were born, I went off to seek my fame and fortune. I neglected you. Then later on, when I became world's heavyweight champion, I neglected you. Then lately I became this corporate cowboy, if you will, in public with a suit and tie on, and I neglected you. And when it came down to choose a partner, I was off in Hollywood, and I neglected you. Let me tell you something, Buckhouse Buck, let me tell you, Colonel Parker, they all nothing but chicken thieves. That's all they are, brother. Let me tell you something else. Terry Funk is nothing but a low life, while a melon thief egg sucking dog. And let me tell you something about Iron Anderson. Iron Anderson, my son offered up his innocence and you paid him back in scorn the hell with you i'm anderson i'm anderson has never been nothing but a walk behind her and when you walk behind and you're not a leader then the view never changes baby the view never changes baby the view never changes you have the ability to be the world's heavyweight wrestling champion. There is not a greater athlete at your age in this sport. But I, I want to ask you a favor. I want to ask you a favor in front of, in front of God in the whole world. I know that the Clash of Champions on August the 24th, you put your name on the dotted line. 
I don't want you to look for another partner. I don't want you to go and find another man. I don't want you to go out and get on your knees and beg another scum-sucking pig to be your partner. I'm asking you if you can carry this old out of shape, old bent out, old spinning legged man. Ah, let me be your partner. I don't need no handshake because out there right now tonight, there's there's people with their brothers and their sisters and their wives. They are blood. The Kennedys were blood. The Earps were blood. The roads are blood. I don't need a handshake. What I need now from you is just a hug and a kiss to seal the deal, baby. Is that not one of the greatest oh, in wrestling history? It is. Dusty Rhodes, well, man, there's nobody like him. Yeah. That was done in Macon, Georgia, by the way. And I remember that day. I remember that view never changes. He said it three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a crew here. It's unbelievable, dude, when you really think about just how talented he was and you know, I mean, listen, some of the descriptors he used, you know, he's a watermelon thief. He's a chicken thief. He's mm -hmm. a walk behind her, mm -hmm. but, but God just, it felt real. Oh yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. One of the top, probably top five dusty roads promos. Yeah. Dusty I mean, I think everybody will put hard times up there at number one, but this right. is on the list. Yep. And, and you want to talk about classics dude you got dustin and dusty here against mm -hmm. buckhouse buck the former jimmy golden old mm -hmm. school southern wrestler mm -hmm. who is now inspired mance warner <laughs> he sure uh, is and terry funk by god yeah with uh, colonel robert parker in their corner uh, listen i know if you grew up as a wwf kid maybe this doesn't have any value for you mm -hmm. but if you were a southern wrestling fan this is pretty fucking cool yeah how crazy is it too that Dustin, I mean, think about how old this show is. This is 28 years old. Dustin's still doing it. And he does it well. Yeah. Dustin he's probably, he's probably in better shape now. Yeah. He, Dustin is not, Dustin has not had a bad match since he arrived in AEW. No, he won't. Yeah. He knows too much. He's too good. And boy, you want to talk about a hot start. Here we go. Yeah. How cool was Terry Funk, dude? <laughs> He's still with us, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Just... Oh yeah. Iris up on that camera. Kind of dark. Oh, Terry, I'll get that chair. We're not going to put people in them. I'm going to throw it. <laughs> Good bug. <Colonel> <laughs> it's a hat fanning him. <laughs> you could read Buck's lips. God damn it. God damn it. Colonel. Uh, and then Ming who. I always thought I'd said this before. If I would, if I would, would have been in Eric Bischoff's shoes, I would have had Ming with me everywhere. Just like that. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Hey, you don't like the finish. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. yeah. And, uh, Bobby, this, this guy named Robbie Rex Steiner is going to walk you out by the way. Yes. Those have been my two men hanging with me all the time. And I would have, uh, if we're going to do that, I would have Rick Steiner draw the little hand puppet. What was yeah. his name? I don't know, but you I know remember what you're though, I, I would have him be yeah. like, you don't like the finish. What was that? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> don't do go in there. See at work don't. tonight. Back. Well, <laughs> if I was you, I'd get my shit on. I got to use that term. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to find a place to use an AW to backstage. I will say, if I were you, I'd get my shit on. <laughs> <laughs> and get it on now. Cause we got a goddamn pre-tape to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, this week on, uh, Jeff Jarrett's podcast, we watched episode five 
of yeah. the TNA pay-per-views from July of 02. Yeah. And that's the one where they had Puppet, the little person, masturbating in a trash can. Oh, God, you and I watched that. But yeah, we got to watch it with is His dad, Jerry Jarrett, was upset yeah. with Jerry Lynn because he used Goddamn in a promo. Oh, really? And that's the same episode where they had a little person beaten off in a trash can. Oh, God. And they had a porn star come out in a wet t shirt. <laughs> And I'm like, I just can't imagine Mr. Jarrett. He had to be walking around the back thinking I'm sp I spent all my money on this. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm going home. Oh, I'd like to thank you for telling me that because I just love busting Jerry Lynn's chops because Jerry Lynn is truly one of the nicest men ever. Absolutely. Yeah. Truly one of the, I, I don't, I Jerry Lynn in ECW just to me does not compute. Right. Because he's such a mild mattered, nice guy. He is a genuinely nice person yes and i i bust his chops all the time about his age because i'm older than him and so i can get by with it <laughs> oh i can't wait to see him now <laughs> yeah bunkhouse buck and uh yeah dusty Rhodes doing their thing let's give you some recaps of where we are he gave uh he being steamboat he being Meltzer, gave steamboat in austin three and three quarter stars uh-huh this match here got two and a half stars Meltzer says dusty wore blue jeans, a t-shirt and jeans. So we were spared looking at him shirtless. Oh God. Well, why would you say that? Why well, I don't know. Given the limitations going in, the focal point of the match was dusty, but he can't move. Can't work. Can't sell. Isn't allowed to bleed and blows up. Just jogging his memory. You know what? This is just negative bullshit. I don't want to read anymore. Don't even read it. Let it, you know, just fuck that. Good. Don't even read it. Oh, but I can tell you my lowest story. Yes, please do. Okay. Uh, I want to set this up by saying Lois, Lois's hair has turned gray as it would. Mine has not as of yet. I'm getting gray around the fringes here. I got a gray beard. I color it, but I don't have gray hair. Uh, as a matter of fact, you could say for my age, I probably look pretty young. People tell me that all the time. So I'm Lois is in pre-op, uh, and she's got, uh, this thing overhead, you can't really see a little bit gray out, you know, and she's got this thing in her nose and everything and she's laying and the anesthesiologist comes in and he says, my dear, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lock the nerve on this arm here. So you won't feel a thing. And I'm going to go in right here. He explained it all to her and he turns to me. Oh, here we go. And says, your mom is going to be fine. I knew it. I love it so much. And. I looked at him and looked at her and of course she, she was, you know, she hadn't been put out yet and everything. And I looked at her and I said, it's going to be okay, mom. And she <laughs> said, she told the anesthesia something. She didn't tell him to go fuck himself. Well, you was, don't do that to that guy. In that <laughs> no, moment. no. She was smart enough for that. So then she goes through the operation and then she goes through, um, recovery. And then they put her in a hospital room and the nurse comes in and I'm sitting there and the nurse looks at me and says, I understand you're her son. Oh God. And I went, yes, I am. Thank you very much. It was in our marriage. It was a wonderful fucking day for me. <laughs> it was a terrible day for her because she got cut on got her bicep cut through. I mean, they do some crazy shit, you know, to put a new shoulder in. But for me, it was just a wonderful day. And how many of the kids have heard that story now? Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I got Lois home. Uh, Lois was home by like nine o'clock. I think by 10 o'clock Eastern time, they'd all heard it. <laughs> what a great story, dude. A mass text. Doom, 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 doom. Guess what? Yes. Yeah. Cause she'll be, you know, we'd done this before in the story. She'll be bitching at me about something. Yeah. And there'll be like a, I don't know. Somebody works in the store helping us. And I'll say, my mom is always complaining to me. She, I'm not your mom. Blah, 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 blah. So I always say that, but man, they hit her twice with the hospital. It was wonderful. I love it so much. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Look at old buck, man, man. You know, he's got his working boots on here. Yes, he does. But Dustin with the big hot tag. Yeah. Dustin goes so great and still is, but man, when he burst on the scene, tremendous and that 
match where Steamboat was his surprise partner and they won the World Tag Team Championship. Still one yeah. of the most memorable matches in the early days of WCW. Absolutely. There's Dusty. That big mm-hmm. elbow. Yep. Yeah, another. Yeah. And why not Colonel Parker? Yeah, he needs one. Oh, Dustin gave him his. Mm-hmm. Here comes Zorn. <laughs> Throw it out. And now they're going to get on Dusty because Dusty's got his back turned. Oh, here comes Ming. Is this where they break a chair over Ming's head? (laughs) Going to get an old wooden chair, break it over his head. <laughs> he broke the wooden chair over his head, didn't flinch. Sunglasses stayed on. Yeah. Out the tongue and death grip down. Uh, goes Dusty. Yeah. Oh man. That's like big Bubba before him. Dusty loved those wooden chairs over somebody's head getting us old. Yeah. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it either with the exception of here comes, uh, who's that? Who the fuck is that? I should know who that is. Frankie Lancaster. Frankie Lancaster. <laughs> who, the, who are all these people? Who the fuck is Frankie Lancaster? I don't know. Well, he worked for us. I mean, I remember. But why is I he remember, out there? I don't know. And who are the people on the left side here? Whoever Dusty could wrangle together, I guess. Oh, uh, here's here. There's uh, Greg Gagne. He's got to get involved in there. Yeah. He probably created all this. This was his idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's all, he's in there looking for talent for his independent wrestling show. Yeah. That still pisses Eric off, by the way. Oh, I'm sure it does. It whenever, should. Whenever he thinks about it, he'll just yeah. get fired up all he over. He should. Him. It's like when I was told this is like, no, no one would be that fucking dumb. Turns yeah. out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. Hey, you know what? That was a pretty decent little segment there. I liked it, man. I did too. I, I liked it. I did. Uh, oh, here's the, the most hilarious segment on the show. According okay. to Okay. You know, very briefly, we'll be going to Eric Bischoff at the hospital. In just a few moments. We have been given word that this coming Saturday on WCW Saturday night, due to their win against pretty wonderful, the nasty boys will go for the world tag team title against pretty wonderful 605 Eastern time this coming Saturday night. On television, yeah. this Saturday night. This, on, this Saturday night on TBS. Well, if anything, this Saturday is going to be like anything we've just seen here. They better get the SWAT team out. I mean, look at Dusty Rhodes. Came back to help his kid. What happened? He's been carted out now. Ming was like a one-man gang. You're exactly right. The American Dream Dusty Rhodes helped out. We Hopefully, he will be okay. But earlier in the night, you just joined us. Hulk Hogan. WCW World Heavyweight Champion with an attack on his knee. We've been following the story with Eric Bischoff, who files this report. All right. I don't know anything more than I knew earlier. Obviously, they wouldn't let me in. I haven't had the opportunity to talk to a spokesperson. I do know that Jimmy Hart, uh, Henry Holmes, the attorney, I see them over by the door. We'll try to get together with them and find out exactly what is going on. All I can say is by the looks on everyone's faces, this it doesn't look good for Hulk Hogan. Henry Holmes, you were in there. They let you in as his attorney. T- tell me what the situation is. Right now, uh, right now, Hulk is an x-ray. The doctor is extremely concerned because it is a knee injury, but the severity of the knee injury is in a great deal of pain, which makes it difficult to examine him. I have advised him in light of the injury, knee injury, which is a very, very serious type of injury, that he should decline to wrestle tonight and he should concede his belt to Ric Flair. 
I've talked with Mr. Bischoff and the other powers that be at the WCW, and in exchange for that, they have guaranteed Hulk. The first shot, the first title shot with Ric Flair, it's out of Ric Flair's hands. He's guaranteed the first title shot. However, Hulk seems to be determined on wrestling tonight. He's not listening to me. Jimmy has tried. Brutai has tried. I called uh, his agent, Peter Young, from Los Angeles, who's also talked to Hulk, and Hulk seems to be determined. So, so is he or isn't he? What is his status? He seems to be determined. He wants to wrestle. We don't want him to wrestle. Jimmy, I'm just going to tell you, Hulk's hard-headed. He's going to do what Hulk Hogan wants to do, right, Bruda? That's right. Hulkster says what Hulkster wants to do, Hulkster's going to do, and there's no power on this earth. There's nothing that could change his mind at this point. As Henry said, everybody's tried to talk to him. We've tried to talk sense to him. We've tried to talk logic to him, but he's not having any part all right, of it. All right, there's some activity back in the back again. We're, we're, that's all we know from here. Back to you. I'll be I'll be right in. I'll be right. In. All right. I thank you very much. So there you go. Meltzer thought that was the funniest thing on the entire show. Mm, okay. Uh, and by the way, I think that really was uh, Henry Holmes, like his uh, Hogan's real life attorney, right? Yeah. Oh, I, yes. Yes, it was. That's kind of cool. Also, I don't know if there was a, and there still is because I get a, a, a couple of them in the mail. There was a uh, a card, a uh, trading card of me circulating around that time and it's still there and that picture was shot with me and heenan right there at ringside that's where they so if you see that trading car with me and heenan heenan's beside me and i'm talking to the monitor and heenan's got his neck brace on it was shot right there uh if you've seen that trading card look at uh sherry what she's got think? road warrior paint on what do you think flair's uh saying right here yeah let's see Mean Gene, let me tell you this right now. Okay, I got two things I want to tell you. Number one is I've got a blade on the end of this finger and shut the fuck up. Don't tell anybody. Second thing is, is that I am going to eventually have five wives and a girlfriend and I am going to bleed in my very last match. Now, you're worried about my pacemaker. You should be worried about my hard on. That's right, because I bleed. I sweat. I pay the price, woo, because I'm the man. And I'll do that up until I'm 73 years old. Why? Because my son-in-law's going to throw me brass nuts and give me another payday, woo, because I am the nature boy. <laughs> I did see you throwing the brass nuts, even though they missed it on camera. Yeah, it was a highly debated thing. I, I did not want to do it. I'm sure you didn't. I felt like, dude, this is going to look like I'm trying to put myself in there. I don't want to do it. Well, yeah. and, and flair was like, no, you're going to yeah. open the guardrail. You're going to come through You're. I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> not doing any of that. Yeah. So then, you know, eventually I was just like, Manny, can I just throw them to you? Mm. So, you know what? I do not remember how I heard that you were going to do that. You didn't tell me that. Well, you told me not to tell you shit. Yeah, I did. That's what I'm saying. But I heard it. Yeah. I don't know where I heard it. And that's why when it happened, and I, of course I'm watching the monitor, right? When it happened, I'm thinking, oh, that's Conrad. I just, I just knew, I don't know who, I don't know how I found that out, but lucky I did because they missed the shot and that's okay because it all worked out. Well, they missed the shot because I didn't tell them. Okay. Because I didn't want to be on camera. I don't want to be a part of it. I know we have to have a reason to get them in there. I wanted Dillinger to do it. And. Rick's like, oh, he was a goddamn police officer. He can't have brass knuckles. I'm like, okay. That would have been good. That's what I said. I, you know, we had a whole idea. I wanted Jeff to clobber, uh, Doug with a guitar at the, uh, horse yeah. photo op. And of right. course Doug's like, oh, I got a guy named Sam who'll do it. <laughs> yeah. A big Sam. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, well, I ain't fucking doing it, but Sam will. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Anyway, we decided not to do any of that. And I just tossed them to Manny and ta-da. <laughs> Speaking of tossing too, you guys are really pushing this as the biggest, I mean, listen, I know we, we, we've been critical of it a little bit, but <clears throat> Hogan is the biggest star in wrestling. Yeah. Not just WCW in wrestling. Uh -huh. In this era, Bret Hart's the top guy on the other channel, Yokozuna, Lex Luger. They're all flirting with the top. Make no mistake. The most important brand name in all of professional wrestling is Hulk Hogan. And you guys have had a thread from the second segment on the show all the way to the end around him. And the result is it sets a rating record. So yeah. 
it's hard to be critical of something that works and you yeah. guys found a way to make it work here. Sure. Look, Heenan just going crazy, man. Heenan was no, it's a wrestle flair. I, no, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. All right. Uh, believe it because my sources are usually correct. Bobby Heenan, give me a break. Gene, as we go on out here and we await possibly that big matchup, we also have our friends back at the 900 number, the hotline, Chris Cruz and Mike Tanae. Yes, and of course, they're going to keep you posted right now on the condition, everything that's happening oh, in the backstage God, locker room Chris area. Cruz. Yeah, can you believe it? Oh, God. He's Thank probably God. back there trying to get the show shut down. Yeah. Thank God Bunkhouse Buck covered him up there. Uh, and they, if I had to guess, we're going to go to a commercial break here in a minute. Before we go to Anoki, let's see what you're shilling here. It's on his way back to the five season center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I can hear that. It is time to go back to the ring, Lord Stephen Regal against Antonio Anoki. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest, a special event, it is set for one fall. Introducing first to be accompanied by his attendant, Sir William. From Blackpool, England, weighing 18 stone, two pounds, he is the world television champion, Jared Stephen Dude, he's so young and so good. Mm. And I just realized, uh, you know, that we just saw a title change. We saw Hogan out earlier with the big gold belt that's behind me over my head. We saw the title switch with uh, Austin and Steamboat. That's over my shoulder. And so is Regal's belt here. Yeah. Exception of those damn WCW tags. I got to find that other one. Mm. You know what that WCW tag is not the six man. I gave up on that, I don't know, years ago. Uh, we got to. But you know it. where that one is. Yeah. You, you know where it is. In your attic, I guess. No, it's in San Diego at Petco Park in the trophy case. No one's ever sent a picture. I'll of get that. Excalibur no to go get it for us. Put his mask on and walk in with it. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Meltzer would be critical of this as we see Anoki coming to the ring. Let's play the music here. It is truly a pleasure and an honor to have such a oh, well known athlete in the world. Is that the same song that y'all use for Ultimate Dragon later? It could have been. It could have been. That's what say. This match was just a backdrop for Hogan's arrival to the building. Anoki physically looks in phenomenal, con phenomenal condition for his age, 51. Right. It has nothing left in the ring. Regal tried, but had nothing to work with. Koji Kanemoto was at ringside for the match, although not acknowledged on television. Anoki tried a hold a few times and finally got it on out of nowhere. Dud. Yeah. Right. So it got uh, a dud rating, but look at him. He looks like a star. He looks like he's in fantastic shape too. So, uh, we have a, uh, a W, uh, uh, shameless bud for a uh, plug for AEW unrestricted podcast, where we had a, a one with Regal recently and Regal and I were talking about the WCW days. We talked about this, this match and he's, he, he told this story that the, uh, Japanese contingent had rented out the entire, uh, upper floor of the hotel because it's, you know, he was in the Senate back then he was a politician. Right. So he had a big contingent and they had the whole floor and they brought him up to talk about the match. And Regal says, I'm laying in live rounds to him. And he knows this. And we talk about that. I'm going to lay in live rounds. And he said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, pull any punches. And he said, that's the way, in, uh, uh, Anoki liked it. And he said, but Anoki puts him out in a sleep or whatever to win the match. Yeah. Regal says he really puts me out. Yeah. I actually do go out. And I told Anoki, he says, I want you to hook and put me out. And Regal says, I'm probably, I'm probably paying for stuff like that years later, you know, stopping the blood supply to the brain. But that's you, what you're seeing here is Regal and Anoki knowing that this is going to be a shoot fight. So, so to speak. And at the end, Regal is really going to be choked out. So. I thought it was very interesting to hear that story from Regal, uh, you know, years and years, decades after it happened. So fantastic. Yeah. Just good uh, stuff. I had actually seen him tell that story. Yeah. Uh, maybe I heard it. I don't, I don't know where, but maybe it was in his book. I just it know could, it could have been, I knew that piece, uh, existed that, that he yeah. really had 
Anoki choke him out. And by the way, he's in phenomenal condition here. This might actually be the best physically that Regal ever looked like. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Anoki, they wanted, uh, they, when they wanted Anoki to come and work on television, Regal was the one they wanted because Regal had spent time in Japan and they trusted Regal and they liked him. And, uh, so see all this grinding his face in top wrist lock or whatever. It's, yeah. it's fantastic stuff. Too. It is. And if, 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 if Meltzer calling this a dud just tells me that Meltzer didn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It didn't. I mean, he's going to criticize Dusty's being fat and body shaming Dusty. And then he calls this match a dud. Well, here's the thing. Like if, if, if you saw the promo that Dusty did yeah, and the way the crowd reacted to everything that happened to the match, yeah. your takeaway right. was we were spared seeing Dusty shirtless. Yeah. Kind of missed the point on this one. Yeah, exactly. And so I don't like Dave, but I mean, come on. That's yeah. He, he missed I mean, just listen, he just, he had a, he had a newsletter. Everybody, most people read it. Okay. But <laughs> somebody get a Nokia off our lap, please. Thank you. William. Uh, pretty remarkable that this match happened and that we yeah. get to see this. I mean, and what an honor I'm sure it was for Regal. I think Flair's last match in Japan was with Regal. And now right. he gets to say that he wrestled Anoki at a clash of the champions Yeah, of all places in Cedar Rapids. And it is a shame that it's seemingly just a backdrop for the story, but I understand we're trying to sell the story. And by the way, from a rating standpoint, it worked. And unfortunately, Anoki wasn't necessarily over with this audience. They didn't yeah. understand what they were seeing. Yeah. But yeah. man, it's, it's a, a pretty big deal to have somebody of this caliber there. And as stupid as I am, I, I didn't know about this match. Remember this match until we were kind of prepping for the show. And I went back and I looked, I went, Oh my God, Regal wrestled in Noki. And that was before I did the podcast with him. So I, I do, I do remember somebody had asked me like maybe about four months ago, I guess on social media, did you ever call an Antonio Noki match? And I went, no, <laughs> well, I did, but I didn't remember it. The only thing right. I remember is Anoki doing a run in, in the, uh, in the, uh, Japan, uh, WCW Japan super show at the egg dome. There you see the hookster Jesse Romero. The hoster. The fans here here on the live screen. Listen in. My favorite part of this is I'm so hurt. I can barely move. I'm not sure I can make the match. Let me limp around. Hey, strap my belt on first, though. <laughs> well, he's gonna be a champ. You know, it's uh it's a good story. Oh, for sure. It is a good story. And it's fuck. I'm digging this fucking match, kids. Well, because listen, they're not doing a bunch of high spots. They're trading yeah. a bunch of holds and yeah. Oh, this might be it. Well, oh, Jesus. Oh, here comes bad news. Well, Commissioner Nick Buckley was making his way here. Yeah, this guy with time it is, he tells you how to build a wall. What could this be now? He's gonna take a bite on me. How crazy was it they got a no key for dark side of the ring? Oh. In, in in hindsight, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. He hasn't aged well. Well, he's 182 years old. <laughs> Every bit. I mean, I just God, like legitimately right now, he's 79. Yeah. What, what a legend. I mean, when he walked to the ring and came to the ring and did that thing, I never will forget it at the egg dome. The fans were just eating out of his hand. Yeah. It, it just, uh, and now we're completely ignoring the match to talk about Hogan. So boo to us, but that's the story. Meltzer had a great line about you guys. He goes, it was an amazing contrast between Gene Okerlund and Tony Schiavone in selling the Hogan injury. Okerlund acted as if his son had just been castrated. Schiavone acted as if the waiter was five minutes late, bringing him his sandwich for lunch. <laughs> there was no sign nor mention of Jesse Ventura and Schiavone's play by play ability was really exposed in the Inoki Regal match where he lacked the wrestling knowledge to call a technical wrestling match. Yeah, you know, that yeah. performance was especially scary since he's going to be the lead announcer on the AAA PPV show. Tony Schiavone's a nothing happening motherfucker. <laughs> One of those lines was made up. 
one of those lines was sent in by Lois <laughs> after the hospital stay. Tony Schiavone's mom dressed him for this pay per view. Actually, correction, that was his wife, Lois. <laughs> God, dude, that that mom story to me is up there with Longhorn Steakhouse now. Yeah, son, your mom's gonna be just fine. <laughs> I should have looked at him and said, I know she's been dead since 1990. That'd have been a good one, but I just had to milk it. I'm glad she's in good spirits. Oh, That's she is. Feeling good. She, yeah. I'm, I'm very, very happy for her. I really am. I, I, and let's, uh, a pat on the back tip of the cap to Chris Shivani. He spent the night here when I was usually I go in on Tuesday, but I flew to Minneapolis on Wednesday and he came here Wednesday and spent the night. Um, to be with mom and help her out. I'm sure, I'm sure your mom said, <laughs> turn on my son's TV show. I'm sure she wanted to know what orange <laughs> Cassidy was up to. <laughs> Here it comes. I think this is it. Yeah. Choke somebody yeah. around the throat. In Japan, they call it a choke sleeper. That's true. But Adam Johnson, Let go, Anoki. No, he said, put him out. He's out. Let him go. In Japan, they call it a choke sleeper. I guess I did. I did know what I was talking about, Dave Meltzer, right? Yeah. How about he that? He says uh, it was a choke sleeper, but yeah, I got a dud rating. I thought it was fun. Yeah. And I think we're going to do one last commercial break before we get to our main event, and they're leaving the main event a ton of time. The actual wrestling match with a hurt and injured Hulk Hogan goes 14 minutes and 27 seconds. Looking at the ticker, though, looks like we got 29 minutes to go. So maybe we got some Gaga in here, but Anoki's right out of there. Yep. Wonder how many super kicks that Chan could take. Shoo. Oh, oh the gosh, Hulk, another Hulk, Hulk Hogan hotline. Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. I guess we can do our last break after he finishes shielding his nothing happening hotline. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Let's do it at uh, uh, 121.05. Three, four, five. That'll do it, boys and girls. We're going to go ahead and take a time out right now and remind you that today's episode and all of our episodes are brought to you by Blue Chew. Guys, uh, not all of us get the good fortune that Tony Schiavone had this week. A, a, another guy referred to him as the son of his own wife. Told him he's a damn good looking man. And in that very moment, Tony's wiener grew three times the size. You might not be able to just bottle that up, but you can with blue chew guys. Confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where blue chew comes in. We call it a hot tag for your wiener meat. Blue chew is a unique online service. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime. So plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises, but the process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll get your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA. They're prepared and shipped directly to your door. So not only is it cheaper, it's also more private because it shows up in a discreet package. But there'll be nothing discreet about your privates or your package. Imagine like, uh, Tony, you ever see one of those balloon animal artists? Those yes, guys. I have. Yeah. So there's squeak, your squeak, 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 squeak. Oop. You just got that little floppy dude just float floating around and then bam, full mass Jones. That's what you can expect with blue chew. And I think we've got a way for folks to try it for free. Right? Tom, if you could benefit from extra confidence, Conrad, when it comes time to perform blue chew can help. And our special offer is for our listeners only try blue chew free. That's free. When you use our promo code WHW at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code WHW to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring What Happened When. And Tony Sweener, whenever that doctor isn't around to uh, compliment his age. So here we go. I'm at 121.05 in three, two, one. Play. Uh, phone number no longer active. 
It's a shame. You can call <laughs> it right now and see what's on there. Yeah. What do you think would be on there right now? Uh, probably one of Hulk Hogan's great messages. <laughs> can you imagine a lamer way to sell it? Don't you want to hear Hulk Hogan's great messages? Mm. Uh, By the way, uh, over the weekend, or I guess maybe not this past Friday night. Okay. We got to see the big hoss of AEW. Now these days, the new kid on town, Parker, mm. that's a big fella. He is a big fella. He's a big fella. He's, uh, he's, he's got a good attitude trying hard. Uh, I think, and I, I think I'm not the only one. It's getting Brian Danielson, getting John Moxley, getting CM Punk, getting Adam Cole. Those are all great gets, but you got to grow your own. Yeah. And I, I know Parker was in XT for a time. A hiccup. Yeah. But you still have to grow your own talent. You do. Uh, so I think somebody like Parker, I think uh, I really like Ari Devari. I know he was in NXT as well. Uh, I like those guys, and I and I just hope that we – that we do right by them. We uh, train them right. We got some pretty good trainers behind the scenes. Hell, we've got William Regal. We got A Steel. We got some great trainers. We got QT Marshall. We got Dustin Runnels. We got great trainers. We really do. Uh, so I hope they. I hope it helps out. Hope it helps out. I'm excited for him to get an opportunity. There was a lot of buzz around him before he signed with uh, WWE. A lot of people were making a lot of pretty crazy comparisons, but he looked like a stud athlete in college. And now he's trying yep. to stand in pro wrestling and cup of coffee with WWE, but now yep. already on TV somewhere else. And, uh, yep. man, it's really cool to see so many people getting a chance. You know, I saw all of a sudden uh, killer cross carrying cross back with WWE and Sam right. back with WWE and right. row folks back with WWE and yeah. all these new talents debuting in AEW. It's an exciting time to be in the wrestling business. Yeah, it is. And I hope we, uh, I, I can't tell you anything to confirm this yay or nay, but I, I certainly hope that, uh, we use Mance again, um, uh, and, uh, and give him, uh, you know, give him some time because as we know, Lance, one, uh, Mance is one of our favorites and a good guy. I like it when good guys can get a chance. The rumor in innuendo is that it was well-rated in the observer as well. I didn't get a chance to read this week's observer yet or okay. last week's observer. Uh, let me see if I can find it right fast, but do you, do you know, I subscribe to the observer and, and have never read one, it. never read one copy. Yeah. I'm I just, I, I just saw, I thought, you know what? Dave is always with the exception of some of the numbskull shit he says about dusty. And back then Dave's always been a supporter of this, of this sport. And Dave and I've always gotten along, you know, uh, we've had some great talks and I thought I'll just give him some money. And I put, <laughs> I put the observer, uh, email in my spam folder and I never see it. But just, I pay him. just, just donating to sports. Just call. Yeah. Yes. Donating to the cause. That's like, uh, you know, uh, donating to, uh, the cauliflower alley club, which I did. Yeah. I, I'm, I wish you were going this year, but I know it's, it's during TV, but it's I, on the Wednesdays. Yeah. I just, man. I'm going, it's going to be fun. Going to take yeah. uh, our dumbass friend, Cassio. Oh man. Take our that stupid was... ass gimmick attorney wants to go. Yeah. Might convince uh lame ass Dave green to go, which means you definitely don't want to go. Don't but... want to go. I don't want to be anywhere. Dave green is. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I would go around St. Louis, not even being near that fucker. Uh, and you know what? I, I could hang out with you and Cassio and, and Mike, obviously. But after that, if you say Silva's going to come or Polisher's going to come or Dave Green's going to come or Matt Coon's going to come, I would say I'm busy. Silva doesn't leave the house. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, Coon uh, won't leave the house. Okay. Uh, Evan Polisher, um, he's like a work friend. Okay. And yeah. uh, Got I mean, I think Dawkins is going to go just to see if he can sell some trademarks to old timers. Whereas Cassio just wants to fucking, you know, have fun yeah. in Las Vegas, like a normal human being. Yeah. Right. Uh, as we see the, uh, the incredible comeback here, once again, brother Bruda standing right by side, beside Hulk Hogan, shoulder to shoulder with him. I, I do like that. Sherry's got the little black veil over her face. Like she's at a damn funeral and she's got the uh, road warrior face paint on. Yeah. She used to paint up in a big way. Yeah. 
And by the way, the, uh, the write-up for our, our, our man, Mance went like this. Moxley beat Mance Warner in a non-title match in 1137. I went four stars for this one as the crowd loved this match. It was all action and a great brawl. Warner has always been a good promo and the crowd reacted to Warner like he was a star. Both suplexed the other on a chair. The one Moxley took looked like it hurt really bad as his back wasn't dropped on the seat, but on the high edge. Both bled. Moxley won with a pile driver, stomps, and a choke. And Warner passed out and it was stopped. But hey, four stars in his first match on TV live against the champ. Yep. Way to go, baby. Pulling for you. Yeah, me too. Me too. So there he goes, buddy, attacking Ric Flair, and the match is on. So how much we got left in the show? We got uh, 22 minutes left in the show. Yep. And they're going to go like, uh, as I said, 15 minutes once the bell rings. So I guess we got a little post-match Jones here. Yeah, I guess. Well, it looks like we'd have a lot of post-match Jones. Meltzer would say here, uh, Michael Buffer then made the first of two snafu announcements, announcing mm-hmm. Flair's new champion, then announcing the title didn't change hands because of a disqualification. The masked man, who was so obviously Arn Anderson that fans at ringside were chanting his name, attacked Hogan, and they worked over his knee and put on a figure four before Sting, who, as the storyline goes, chartered a flight at the last minute, made the save. Three and a half stars. Sting! It's Sting! There's a t-shirt out. Uh, AEW's got a t-shirt out said, with a scorpion and says, It's Sting! They gave me one. Well, that, that's your payoff. That's my payoff. That's cool. <laughs> and I had to ask for it for like three weeks. I want to but, mention, uh, this is around the same era. What we're talking about here. Uh, let me, let me look this up. Clash of the champions. 28. Carry the one. So this is the day after this okay. is August 28th, 1994. This is the day after Shane Douglas won the NWA world title in Philadelphia at the ECW arena at the uh-huh. time called Eastern championship wrestling. Right. And then announced that the NWA was a dead organization. Uh-huh. He was throwing the title down yep. and declaring himself the new ECW world heavyweight champion. And of course they would then change the name of the promotion from Eastern championship wrestling to extreme championship wrestling. And it was a real deal double cross for the pro- local promoter of the NWA, Dennis Carluzzo. Wow. So a lot of craziness happened this weekend in wrestling between Shane Douglas double crossing the NWA and Anoki wrestling Regal and Hulk Hogan being turned on and Nancy wow. Kerrigan and WCW wow. setting a ratings record. Pretty big weekend for you guys. Yeah, we were, uh, we were feeling pretty good. I mean, listen, we were. Uh, Mike Weber had said to me one time, and this was probably during the WCW era that our buy rate between the first, between the last pay-per-view that Hogan was not on, which I guess was spring stampede of 94 and the first, or maybe it was great American bash of 94 and the first one that Hogan was on, which was bash of the beach 94, the buy rate was incredibly different. In other words, just his presence really increased our buy rates. I don't know if those numbers exist anywhere that you could look them up, but what Hogan meant to us as far as buys on a pay-per-view. It was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, the, the bash at the beach show the month before is the all time at the time, all time biggest grossing event in WCW history. Right. We never had anything like that before. No, not at all. So we, we were, we were, we experienced financial growth thanks to Hulk Hogan yes, and Eric Bischoff bringing him in. So there's your reason. And you can, I I know the NWO had a lot to do with that. I get it, but still Hogan's arrival changed our fortunes. Let's run, let's run through it real fast. You have a scale and scope of the numbers. Okay. Uh, Starcade 87, where it was sabotaged 20,000 buys. 20,000. Okay. Bobcast stampede 200,000 great American bash 88, 190 starcade 88, 150 shot town rumble. 130. wrestle war. 120 
Great American Bash 140, Halloween Havoc 175. This trend continues. Great American Bash 90, where Sting won it, pops up to 200. Okay. But by Halloween Havoc 91, we're back down to 120,000. Wrestle War 92, which people loved with that awesome War Games, only did yeah. 105,000. That's number of buys, right? We're talking yes. about okay. Beach Blast 92, 70,000. Great American Bash uh, 92, 70,000. This trend continues. And then even like Starcade 93, 115,000. Bash at the beach is two pay-per-views later, mm -hmm. 225,000. The biggest of all time. Yeah. Doubled it up. And basically. then they, they did it again at Halloween Havoc. Hogan uh -huh. versus Flair in a steel cage for uh -huh. retirement, 210,000. Yeah. And you wouldn't crest 200,000 again until Super Brawl 6, uh -huh. which would have been Hogan Vader. Uncensored right. 96, where it was Hogan and Savage versus every heel that ever wrestled. In that cage? Un yep, the 250,000. Whoa. Bash at the Beach 96, where Hogan turned heel, 250,000. Mm -hmm. Star uh, Halloween Havoc 96, 250,000. Starcade 96, right? Hogan, yep. Piper, Municipal Auditorium, 345,000. Jesus Christ. Halloween Havoc 97, 405,000. And oh then my God. Hogan Sting, right? Start yep. 97, 700,000. Oh so my listen, God. It's easy for a lot of people to say Hulk Hogan this, Hulk Hogan that. Yeah. Fuck directly off. Exactly. Fuck directly off. Hulk Hogan was a draw. Yeah. You can say he wasn't a good wrestler. He sure. played politics. He held people down. He didn't hold revenues down. Sure did. Anyone who says differently doesn't really yeah. understand the business and they're, they're too far in the bubble. Yeah. Cause I get it. Listen, there, we all have our favorites. Jay, you know, you and I just before we clicked record talked about what a great human being Jay lethal is, uh -huh. how much we love Jay lethal. And I could right. get, maybe somebody listening to this is like, well, I don't like him. Okay. You yeah. probably don't know him. Right. And sometimes when you get to know somebody, your views get skewed. And I think that's probably why. Meltzer was shitting on dusty, right? He yeah. had some poor interaction with dusty and decided he didn't like dusty and it came through and I get that. Yeah. But to say, well, Hogan was a net negative. No, what, where, yeah. how illogical. Yeah. We go from Starcade 87 to 20,000 buys, which was the sabotage of Starcade. Yes. To 700,000 plus 700 plus thousand buys. 10 years later, 10 years later. And what was the difference? That old lady, that old lady's whacking flair. Did you see that? She reached for flair, the cane and Hogan told her to stop. I think she was reaching for Hogan. Was she? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, God, maybe that's pretty an old lady who cheered the heels. Maybe she rode space mountain 20 years earlier. Gosh, knowing him, uh, you never know. I cannot wait. To tell Ric Flair the story of Lois and Mom, <laughs> he's going to think that's the greatest story he's ever heard. <laughs> it is a great story. It is one that's going to live in the Shivani annals forever. Look at Jackie Crockett get right up in there with the camera, man. One of the all-time greats. And by the way, I know it's over now, so I'm not trying to shill it. Uh, but for Ric Flair's last match, we did that little docu series, and we got yeah. to interview Jackie Crockett. Yeah. And I just loved his little thing that we posted on social where it was well wishes. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, you know, ho I hope you enjoy your last match and I hope it goes well. And I'll be pulling for you and hope to see you again soon. Yeah. And piss on the rest of them. <laughs> I just thought that's, so I don't even know Jackie Crockett, but yeah. that feels like a Jackie Crockett thing to say. Yes. Piss on the rest of them. When they, when they shot Jackie, uh, for the uh, documentary. Yeah. Were you there? I was not. You should have asked him about some, I know he's got my wrestling posters. I know he does. Well, he's got a bunch of stuff. I'll tell you yeah. what off air, but we, we yeah. hooked him up with some folks who were going to help move some of that stuff. You know, yeah. there, there's a handful of things I I'd be interested in if I knew he had it, but I don't know yeah. that he does, but the, some, the stuff I heard he had, wasn't anything I would really collect. Well, I only say that about my wrestling posters was I brought them in when I started working there yeah. because I was such a fan. And every time we would go to Greensboro or Richmond or Roanoke, and even some of the spot shows, I would find a, one of those, you know, cardboard wrestling posters that were either green or pink and with black type on them. And, and I, I had a stack of them about, if you're watching on video about that thick of them, and wow. I put them in this cardboard thing 
And when I left for the WWE, I forgot to bring them when I left Jim Crockett promotions. And uh, I'm sure I'm, I don't, they could have been thrown away, but I have a feeling if Jackie collected some stuff, he's got those. So those were part of my past too. I would love to see those. I really don't have anything in my, in my, my house here that, you know, has wrestling. You obviously have a lot of wrestling memorabilia. I have none. Well, I guess we should mention this. You know, I'm I'm selling the Conrad Addison. Oh, oh, really? And I'm I'm moving to the lake. You are. Yeah. And so I don't really have a spot for all my shit here. Oh, well, just build another room on the lake house, dude. Well, the thing is, it's kind of like, what am I doing with all this shit? So part of me wants to hang on to certain pieces. Well, all of me wants to hang on to certain pieces. But a lot of this stuff, it's like. I don't really have space for this. So I, I know you haven't been to the office in a while, but we've got a little studio in the back where Silva sits just like floor to ceiling with really cool stuff. And I'm going to try to cram some more in there, but it's like, you know, it doesn't really like where I, you've, you've been to my studio before. I'm like off the garage right now, kind of tucked away. Okay. My office at, at the new house is like right by the front door. It would, huh. it's just weird to me. You walk in and you see a bunch of fucking wrestling belts and shit. So it's like, yeah. I, I got to find somewhere else to put some of this stuff. Yeah. You need a, you need another room. Hey, I didn't know you, I didn't know you were selling the Conradison. There you go. Well, I mean, I have it. Here's the deal. I got a guy in my life who I've been friends with for a long time, done a lot of business with. And when I told him, you know, what I was doing, he's like, what are you going to do with the Huntsville house? And I said, ah, I don't know. I get all the way in the lake house and get settled in and figure it out. And he goes, are you going to sell it? I go, you want to buy it? And he goes, yeah, more than anything. I was like, well, okay, I'll sell it to you. Oh. I was kind of weird about selling it to somebody I didn't know. Right. But it's like, okay, well, it's kind of, ah, oh, that sounds dumb. It's just a house, but I've been here a long time and had a yeah. lot of fun and I don't want to just like, I don't know, but if it's like a buddy of mine and a friend of mine, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I can do that. I wouldn't mind buying it if it wasn't in Alabama. There you go. There, but there you go. Hey, let me tell you about ratings here for this one. Cause we, okay. we sort of ran through a bunch of other cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, this one sets the all time record at the time, 2,754,000, not people households. Mm. So you're saying like over 5 million folks. Watch sure. this. And the rating, of course, the ratings changed because it's based on the number of homes and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. So the very first clash of the champions way back in 88, got a 5.8 rating, but this did not, this got a, um, a 4.5, but okay. still it's a record 2.754 households. But what's wild is as a live event, it's not, it's not hugely successful. Only $40,000 at the gate. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's well, again, now back then, right? Back then, you can see it live on TV. Yeah. Uh, By the way, this main event we're watching, this is important because th that 2.754 is what watched it all the way through. Uh -huh. The main event here, this is crazy. Got a, got 4,126,000 homes. Mm. So if you just double it, right, that means there's 8 million folks watching it. So I even had that number wrong. When it comes to just the main event, but this was a bonanza, but still when it turns to dollars, just 40,000. Yeah. It's kind of interesting too, Tony, because it feels like WCW really came into their own. Once Hogan was here, Yeah, look how little advertising there is uh, in terms of sponsored elements. Like there's nothing on the, the canvas. There's nothing on the ring skirt. There's nothing on the buckles or the ring posts, right? The replays aren't sponsored by right. Valvoline right. or whatever, right? WCW got much more sophisticated in their sales strategies and, or they had much, many more opportunities. I'll look at Hogan stopping the referee. Yeah. Well, we had a, we had a, we actually had a staff in place, but, but on. also too, I just think, you know, main like Madison Avenue probably right. took you more seriously when you had Hulk Hogan. Oh, there's no question. Like, you know, or otherwise, you know, cause WWF was really the brand, you know, mm -hmm. like. Even now, and I know nobody wants to say this, but I mean, it's reality. Like if you just run into somebody at the Walmart, if you were to say, oh yeah, my, uh, my buddy works in professional wrestling, 
they would say, you mean that WWE stuff? That's right. Because it's just the brand. It's, it's so well established. Right. And, and that was certainly the case in the marketplace in 1994, there was the WWF and then there was everything else. And you, that just felt minor league by comparison, but ain't nothing minor league about the, the Hulk Hogan brand. That's right. Yeah. Did he ring the bell? what did he do? I guess he did ring the bell. Hogan wins by disqualification or did no, what, what did Flair win by disqualification? I don't get it. The winner is Nature Boy Rick Flair, but Hogan will retain the title. The winner once again, heavyweight champion of the world. He called him heavyweight champion of the world there, didn't he? And you're trying to cover it up. Yeah. Mm. No, Flair is not the champion. That's exactly right. He is not the new champion. He is counting. He is, uh, he is counting Hogan, but nobody does not change hands. Hello, Victor, ladies and gentlemen, with this qualification, still champion Hulk Hogan. The belt cannot change hands on the qualification. Well, he is not the qualification either. He is counting. So here comes the mass man bullshit in a minute with our name. But first we got to get our heat back, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. we got a seven minutes to go on the show and I know they're going to run two minutes of credits because that's what you do back then. Um, you didn't like the credits? No, not at all. My credit is my paycheck in the story, which all, which yeah, boy, you can tell Arn Anderson throwing those left hands. Right. Yeah. There's, I mean, just the way he walks, right. Moves. You, you just know if you're a wrestling fan, you just know. You know, you watch some of those shows on Netflix now yeah. and, and Hulu. Yeah. They have literally seven minutes of credits. Why do you watch seven minutes of credits? I don't. I, the reason I know is that, that I'm, I'm watching the timeline and it'll say like the show's 38 minutes, but the show will end at like 30. And I'll go, I thought the show was 38 minutes. Oh, here's Sting. Yeah, I kind of thought it was Ronnie Garvin at first. Well, that buzz cut and no <laughs> that's paint. Right. That's right. And, and he's got flannel on because he's proud to be an American. Right. How about Sting in cowboy boots and flannel? Wow. I kind of didn't think Sting was that kind of guy. thought he was surfer Sting. Now he's cowboy Sting. Yeah, there you go. Well, he's just cool, you know? Sting can, be, Sting can be anything he wants to be, brother. Yes, he can. And always will be. Yep. Well, there you go, man. Uh, that's going to wrap up the story. We got a little Nancy Kerrigan uh, storyline. Yeah. And um, I mean, listen, it was a good show. And, 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 and you guys did a really good job of trying to sell the Hogan thing. And you set records. And you got a big surprise at the end. It, it, it was a screw job finish, but you got a big surprise at the end. And mm -hmm. so that's cool. Cause you got sting. I, I got to say though, I wish Sting looked like sting. Yeah. I know in storyline, he chartered a jet and all that. And I appreciate that. But if he came out looking like sting, I think it would have been a bigger pop. Cool. If we can, yeah. if we can suspend disbelief in every other area, we can there too. Sure. Hmm. Well, he's got a pose, right? How about the pink sign with the white letters? Why? I don't know. All the colors they could find. And what's weird is we've still got like four minutes left. I know. I don't know what we're doing here, but I do know that even though I'm not, uh, yeah, I guess I'll make it. Hey y'all, I do mortgages and whatnot, and I'd love to help you uh, save some money and so forth. Go to conradreviews.com and, and just see what other people are saying about their experience with us. We really genuinely can help you have more money at the end of the month. And maybe you've realized there's more month at the end of the money. Well, let's fix that. How's this for starters? Skip your next two house payments. That's right. You don't have to make your August or I guess you made your August down. You don't have to make your September or your October payment. You're done until November 1st. And come November, here's something to be thankful for, a cheaper monthly payment. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your 30-year loan and cut it in half. I know what you're thinking. Well, how are you going to do that? That's going to make my payment go higher. Yeah. But if we get rid of all your other debt, 
You see, you've got credit card debt right now. I just know it. And you're probably mm-hmm. stuck making that minimum payment. You probably also know that rate's way too high. What is it? Yeah. 18, 28%? Probably 24. Well, the interest you pay on your credit card is not tax deductible, but the interest you pay on your house is. So if you know I can get you a better rate, you know I can get you a better tax deduction, you know I can get you a cheaper monthly payment, you know I can help you skip your next two payments, but most importantly, you can pay your house off faster. And that might not be on your radar right now, but I want you to think about this. How old are you going to be when you pay your house off? Don't you think it's weird that you don't know the answer to that? I bet you know how many car payments you have left. I bet you know how much you own your credit cards. We just get used to living without that money because it's just drafted out of our bank account. The word mortgage is actually Latin for pledge until death. It was designed by bankers to keep you giving them 29% of your gross monthly income forever. That's not the American dream. The American dream is to own your house free and clear. And if that's not on your radar, let's make it a goal and let's make it happen together. And by the way, at SaveWithConrad.com, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. We're going to get you a plan. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. But if you've got a second mortgage, if you've got credit card debt, uh, I can help, man. I can help. If you're in a 30 year loan, I can help. And don't take my word for it. Go look up our A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Go to ConradReviews.com. See the thousands of reviews we've got. Our average score is 4.72. Are there a couple bad ones in there? Sure. We don't get it right every time, but we're averaging 4.72. It's overwhelmingly positive reviews. Go see for yourself. ConradReviews.com. Find out how much money you can save for free at SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. And man, they're still going. This was a poorly timed show here, Tony. Yeah, a lot of them are. You see, they're still filing out, and we still got about two minutes to go in the show. So uh, we're going to fill here. It was a a dastardly act perpetrated, obviously, by Nature Boy Ric Flair earlier in the night. You send hey, Hulk see, now that's what happens with the media. And you're one of those people that say things out of out of text. You're going to make the whole world think that Ric Flair had something to do with it. You don't have proof. I don't have proof. Nobody's got proof. So you can't make these kind of statements. I am going right now to tell Ric Flair exactly what you said. What? By the way, this show got a 7.7 share. So think about that. You know, I, if there's 100 people watching TV, 7.7 of them are watching this. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. Like, the, I mean, in 94, cable's massive. Everybody, not everybody. Yeah. Most folks have, you know, cable or satellite. And there's literally over 100 choices. Right. And, and folks are still piling in to see Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair after all these years. Yeah. How about that? Well, it's Tony, amazing. uh, I, I think we'll just give us a mercy killing. Okay. All right. Uh, Amazon stop. What's happening behind you there? Is that Lois? That's Siri. Amazon stop. Bitch. <laughs> Tony right now, it looks like it's about that time. Hulk Hogan is down. Hulk Hogan is down. Flares on top of the turnbuckle. Rolling in with the pipe is Brother Brute Arn, the, the mystery uh, Nancy Kerrigan. And he hits a uh, Hulk Hogan in the head. They prop Hulk Hogan up. And 11 kernels of corn fall out his ass. We're desperately out of time. See you next week on What Happened When. Wednesdays, we're on the Cumulus Radio Network. But Mondays, we come to you on... Patron, patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, ad free shows.com. Oh, hood.